Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time and this week's topic guys is the four pictures of power. There are things that you need to understand to be a good trader, okay? 70% of the stocks follow the market. So what do you do with the other 30%? Do you just not trade them? Are they the, the diamonds in the rough? Are they the holy grail ideas? Well, today we're gonna to talk about that. There are really four main things you wanna look for when you're looking for uh, a stock to make money on. If you're looking for a gapping stop, a wide range igniting bar, relative strength, et cetera, and so forth. So those are the things that we're gonna talk about today. And the reason this is important is most stocks do move with the market. So what do you do in a day where the market goes sideways or it's choppy or the market doesn't have a clear or firm direction? Are you just gonna not trade that day? Well. Yeah, you could not trade that day, but the problem is those days happen somewhat frequently, probably 20 to 25% of the time. So if you just give up trading for those 25% of the time, well, you're gonna make less money. And also, the concepts that we're gonna talk about today are doable, are tradable in all market conditions, whether the market's going up, whether the market's going down, whether the market's going flat or sideways. So basically, these are the concepts that are gonna help you be one of those well-rounded traders who can make money in any market condition no matter what, all right? So you definitely wanna pay attention to this lecture. There's a lot of great lectures on this channel, but this is one of those higher level, uh, experience level lectures. And don't get me wrong, newer traders can learn quite a bit from this as well, but the experienced traders will really appreciate this lecture. All right, I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. If you like these videos, click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. All right, let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is trading success, the four pictures of power. Um, this is a lecture it has been a long time. I think it's been two or three years since I've done something similar to this lecture. Um, and for me, I consider this a very important lecture. Um, you know, money management's your number one job in trading. That will never, ever, ever change. Um, but this particular topic will allow you to trade all markets. And you think, well, what does that mean? You guys, you have to understand, some of you are very good at trading trending markets that go higher. You have no idea what to do with a pullback market or no idea what to do with a sideways choppy market. Um, and that's the general public as well, right? Most people only know how to make money in their long-term investments when the market goes up. They have no idea what shorting a stock even means. And if the market has a choppy year, then they have a choppy year. Well, to be a great trader, you're gonna need to learn how to make money in all market environments. Plain and simple, right? Because if you can't, there's gonna be a 30, 40% of the time, you're not gonna be able to do anything. You're gonna be stymied, you're gonna be you know, frozen, so to speak. So you need to learn how to make money when the market does nothing, when the market goes up, and when the market goes down. So today we're gonna to talk about how you do that, how you can make money in any market, all right? And as I said before, these lectures are not fluff, all right? They are hardcore education. The problem is with people that don't know trading, they take somebody who's very good at talking and that person gives them 10% information and 90% fluff and the person walks away and goes, well, I learned so much and I'm thinking, you didn't learn anything. You just don't know it. This, this is hardcore learning. All right, this is 99% hardcore and 1% fluff. The fluff are my horrible jokes in the middle, okay? Um, so let's dig in the four pictures of power, all right? Um, yeah, refresh. Uh, if you can't see it, just hit the refresh button, okay? Um, we're gonna take a look at the four pictures of power, then we're gonna look at a couple other slides, and don't worry, it flows, it flows nicely, all right? Um, no when will the insanity stop this week, I wanna keep it on a positive note this week. Usually I try to scare the bejeebies out, out of you guys by seeing someone who does horrible, terrible things where they'll take 10,000, turn it into 100, and then lose two million afterwards, that kind of thing, but we're not gonna do that this week. So here are the basic pictures of power, and we're gonna explain and go into each one of these in depth and in detail. A wide range bar clearing significant support or resistance is one picture of power. Extreme relative strength or extreme relative weakness is the second picture of power. A strong trend on a higher time frame is the third picture of power, and gapping stocks are the fourth picture of power. Sadly, most of you are really only good at this one, a strong trend occasionally gapping stocks. So maybe two out of three people are decent with. The other two, not so much, all right? Um, there are two main things that you need to be looking for when you trade, all right? 
And this is a problem that I find almost every trader has at some point. Now, some people overcome this affliction very quickly. Other people, not so much. All right. There are two areas of focus, and this isn't just for intraday traders. Honestly, this is for swing and core traders as well. I put intraday traders in here, but the truth is this can be applied to swing trading. Okay. You have two time frames. You have a time frame of bias and a time frame of entry. Every single trade has this. There's a bias time frame and an entry time frame. We do not vacuum trade here. Vacuum trade means your tunnel vision, you're looking at one time frame, let's call it the five minute chart, and you know nothing about the one minute, you know nothing about the 60 minute, nothing about the daily, and nothing about the market. You are tunnel visioned, and you are going to be a losing trader by doing that. Every once in a while, you'll get away with it, but most of the time, you're gonna get hosed doing it. All right, I see it happen a lot. And I'm gonna show you on the next slide in just a second how you can mitigate that. But the time frame of bias for an intraday trader is usually going to be your daily or your 60 minute chart. They are going to be your two most popular time frames to garner your bias. Your bias simply means what direction is the stock going, higher, lower, neutral, okay? It's like this. You ever see a, a big whale and, or sharks or whatever? What are those little, I can't remember, the remoras? Is that what they're called? Those little fish, those little sucker fish that hang on the bottom of a shark or a whale or whatever they are? That's your time frame of bias. The shark, the whale, that's the bias. You're going with the shark. You're going with the whale. You're just hanging on for the ride, all right? So if you want to swim in front of the shark, you're in deep shit. If you want to swim in front of the whale, you're going to be like one of those little tiny shrimp. You know, you're, you see the, the whale open its mouth and, and hundreds of thousands of shrimp go in it? That's what you're going to be if you choose to trade without a bias on a higher time frame. All right? I wish I had a picture of that. Maybe next time I'll put one in there. Your job is to let the big boys clear the path for you. Let me repeat it because it's important. Your job is to let the institutions, the banks, the HFTs, the big boys clear the path for you. And then you're going to walk in the path behind them. You will never jump in front of them. The second you do, they will eat you alive. So your time frame of bias is going to be a daily chart or a 60 minute if you're an intraday trader. 60 minutes, probably the best, to be honest with you. Now, if you're a scalper or like a micro trader where you're scalping on one minute charts, you might be able to use the 15 minute as your bias you might be able to use the 15 minute as your bias, okay? Then after you've clearly established your bias, you're gonna look for a time frame of entry, All right? That entry for intraday traders is usually gonna be on a five minute chart, a two minute or a one minute. I highly recommend you do not use the one minute chart when you're new. I'll say it again. I highly recommend you do not use the one minute chart when you're new. Okay, I know you're not gonna listen to that because you're all a bunch of teenagers and you have to do it for yourself because dad and mom are idiots and it's not so you're 30 years old you wake up and go, man, maybe mom and dad weren't so dumb. I'm telling you this from experience. Trading in the first five minutes of the day on one minute charts is going to get you in trouble. And I know a lot of people did well today on Pan W, literally just gunslinging, like literally gunslinging. Oh, well, he said it was gonna go higher so I just took a five second high. Okay, I made 10R today, why? Because I had a 12 cent stop loss with a 30 cent spread and the stock went $2. Okay, that's not how good traders trade. That's not how you'll be around long term, okay? I want you guys to think about this analogy. I haven't used this analogy in a few months, so I'll use it again today. Most of you, and this is the entry that I'm talking about, the vacuum that I'm referring to. Most of you are in the, the leaves of the tree, the branches, the bark of the tree. Like you are literally facing the bark and the leaves of the tree. You cannot see anything, just the leaves and the bark and the branches. See, when you go to a time frame of bias, you are getting into a helicopter and you are flying above the forest and you're looking at the whole forest. I wanna know what everything looks like. Once I see the forest looks good and it, everything is okay, then I'm gonna get out of the helicopter, I'm gonna get into the tree and I'm gonna start looking at the branches and the leaves. You see, the problem with only using an entry time frame and skipping the bias time frame, the problem with this is the forest around you could be on fire and you won't know it. Everything around you could be burning up, but you're so focused on that damn leaf in front of you, the one minute chart, the two minute chart, that you don't know that you're about to get burnt. 
And this is a big problem with traders. Trust me, it happens so frequently. People email me all the time, Jared, what happened on this trade? Did you look at the 60? No, well, it's up nine bars in a row. How much higher did you think it was gonna go? Yeah, I didn't look at that. So they have this nice little one minute three bar play at 9.35 in the morning, but the 60 minutes up nine bars in a row. It's probably not gonna go much higher. And if it does, you just got lucky, all right? So never enter a trade without looking at multiple time frames first, period. Drill it into your head. Never enter a trade without looking at, put it on the whiteboard, like you're at detention, you just got a demerit in school and you have to write this out like 50 times, write it. Never enter a trade without looking at multiple times. Now, people wonder, well, what does that look like? It looks like this. It looks just like this. This is my actual screen. I took a screenshot of this yesterday, okay? This is the spy on a five minute. This is the spy on a two minute. It's the spy on a 15 and a daily. I can never enter a trade without looking at all four of these. And the reason I put them all together is so I don't have to go very far to find it. If I wanna know what the daily looks like and the two minute, they're sitting right across from each other. If I wanna know what the five and the daily looks like, they're sitting diagonal from each other. If I wanna know what the 15 and the two, they're diagonal from each other too. So when people say, well, how do you do that? I don't know, you put four charts on a screen and you look at the screen. It's that simple, which means there is never, ever, ever, ever any excuse to not look at multiple time frames, because you're going to put one portion of one of your monitors on there. Take a third of a monitor, a half of a monitor, and you're going to put whatever time frames you're comfortable with. You can use the 60 minute, the daily, the five minute, two minute, 60 daily, whatever you want. I happen to like these time frames for intraday trading, and I do like the 60, probably the most, to be honest with you, but I have that on another chart on another monitor, so I'm always looking at that. But here's a five minute spy, 15 minutes spy, two minutes spy, daily spy. The gap down yesterday was bearish, period. We said it. Gapped under that green bar right there, and you had room all the way down to about 400 bucks. And that's exactly what the market did. So, this is how you view multiple time frames. It's very, very simple. All right. Here's a great example. This is a trade that Cliff called yesterday. Cliff Clark. 737, that's 937. So seven minutes into the day yesterday, Cliff said, I like HD 305 by 307. What does this mean? It means the entry price is $305. The stop loss, if we are wrong, is $307. We're gonna exit at 307 if we're wrong. If we're right, the stock should go lower. This is a short idea, okay? But Cliff didn't just look at this on a five minute or a one minute and go, oh gee, HD looks lower. He started with the daily chart. Now take a look at that daily chart. Just take a look at it. It's gapping down under this green line. The green line represents support, okay? This represents support, okay? Once you get under that support area, the stock should drop, okay? No, it's the worst trading advice out there, Guillermo. I'm just wasting your time. I'm just sitting here for an hour, okay? And I'm going, you know what? These guys don't need to know jack shit about trading. They just want to lose money and gamble. So you know what? Don't listen. I mean, what kind of question is that? Is this the best trading advice out there? No, it's terrible. I'm just like to waste my time and your time. Yeah, anyway, back to the lesson at hand, okay? So you gap down under this green line right here. That's it. The buyer stepped up here and bounced. The buyer stepped up here and bounced. The buyer stepped up here and bounced. But today, that did not happen. You took out all of those buyers over here. And the next area where buyers stepped up is way down here at 280. Okay, it's way down here. Oh, and if you think I'm tough, wait till you trade the markets. I'm a cream puff compared to how tough the markets are gonna be on you, all right? So anyway, stock has room. Cliff's like, wow, the daily looks lower. So let's drill down and find our entry. He started with his bias, okay? Started with his bias, and then his job was, hey, the forest is good. Now let me check out the tree. Let me check out the branches, the leaves, the bark. Okay, and that's what we did. There's a five minute three bar play right here. Okay, this right here, Ollie gave you the quick mature answer. I could have just said yes and moved on, but that's just not in me. Uh, anyway, there's the entry at 305, and this stock went down to like, I think it went down to 295, something like that. Okay, it went right down to 295. So <clears throat> here's what it looks like if I add the market. So what happened on this day? We had a bearish bias on the market already, okay? We had a bearish bias on the market. So we wanna try to look for stocks that are short ideas because if the market's gonna go down, we wanna do our very best as, as much as we possibly can to stick with the trend of the market, 
okay? So if you take a look at the SPY gap, you take a look at the HD gap, they're in alignment, right? Take a look at both of these gaps and they're in alignment. That's a good sign because I believe the market's gonna go lower given the gap and the stock should go lower given the gap. So we have what? Not only multiple time frames in alignment, we're also in alignment with the market, okay? So, now, there's the entry in case you're curious. I blew it up for you right there. I know the reason I did that is sometimes, you know, these spreadsheets, whatever, they're small and you're looking at them on a smaller device. So you can see this, there's a five minute three bar play. We got in a little bit before the three bar play on a one, two minute breakdown. But if you missed the one or two minute breakdown, there was a five minute three bar play. So again, I'm just simply blowing this up. And Cliff called this trade yesterday and this was on our gap list. And I don't know if it was on our favorites list, I don't recall, but it was on our gap list, okay? So this is a multiple time frame trade that gave a great pattern inside of a market that was also weak. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, us and them in days, this is how good trading is done. You take the higher time frame, you match it with the lower time frame, and you match that with the market direction. You take the higher time frame, match it with a lower time frame, and you try to match the market direction as well. If you can do those three things, it will be hard to fail in this business other than not taking stop losses and doing you know, silly things of that nature, okay? Um, so when you look at that, that's a good point, Motorhead, all right? But when you look at it like that, this is how professionals will trade. Okay, that's how a professional trade. So now let's go back. All right, we're just getting warmed up here. We're just getting started. Wide range bar clearing significant support or resistance. You'll see it in a moment. Extreme relative strength or weakness. A good example of that today was Pan W. The market got hammered. What was it? About seven or eight five minute bars in a row went lower, red bars in a row, and Pan W stayed at the high of the day or near the high. That was extreme relative strength today on Pan W. Okay, a strong trend on a higher time frame. This is what we just saw on HD. But here's the beauty. HD combined both of these. The gap made the trend, pushed the trend lower. So we're gonna take a look at each one of these individually. So by the time we're done, you are very clear about each one of these four pictures of power. Okay, so here would be a first one. Okay, this is a 60 minute chart. All right, right here we have two two wide range bars igniting and breaking above resistance. This red line represents resistance. Resistance represents sellers, okay? So right now the stock is going sideways, chop, 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 right? This green bar takes out all of the sellers and basically it's like breaking down a wall. Now that the wall is broken down, you can move forward much easier, okay? so. Bullish wide range bar clearing resistance. The 60 minute chart might be the most important time frame for intraday traders. The daily gets all the attention, but the 60 can help provide an inside look at the daily and provide an entry that you might not have otherwise considered without looking at the 60. And it's true. The daily chart gets all the attention, but for intraday traders, the 60 might be the best time frame you can look at. So wide range igniting bar, a couple few resting bars, four, four resting bars, and then another igniting bar. This bar right here, the first wide range bar, sets the tone for the day. The tone is bullish. And once you break the resistance, there's no sellers up here to sell into. Not no, but fewer sellers. Does that make sense? So once you take, what was happening here, guys, for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days, buyers and sellers were in what? They were in a tug of war, back and forth. Buyers win, sellers win, buyers win, sellers win, back and forth tug of war, okay? Eventually and finally, the buyers stepped up and basically overcame, overtook all of the sellers. So now that you've gotten rid of the majority of the sellers, there's not gonna be as many to sell into you in the future above $34, $34.50 because you got rid of most of them. You, you fought the good fight and you won, all right? But sometimes there are manipulation. Well, what does that mean, Joseph? 
if we were right 100% of the time, we wouldn't need stop losses, would we? When we have a stop loss on every trade we take. So again, think about what you're asking. Of course, sometimes, everything happens sometimes. Sometimes LeBron James misses an easy layup dunk, doesn't he? I've seen him miss a tomahawk dunk, put it right off the rim, sometimes. But most of the time, he's probably going to make that shot, right? Sometimes anything can happen. I'm not after what happens sometimes. I'm after what happens most of the time. We're odds traders. Even if our odds are only 3 or 4 or 5% better, I'm looking for a statistical advantage. And that statistical advantage doesn't happen over one or two or three trades. It happens over 100 trades, 1,000 trades, 2,000 trades. It's the same reason the casino always wins. You can go in to a casino and you can take the house today, can't you? But if you keep going back again and again and again, the casino is going to take your money. So I'm not interested in what happens some of the time. I'm interested in what happens most of the time. And most of the time, when a wide range bar breaks above resistance, it continues higher. All right. And in this case, it gave you either a swing trading entry at 34.25, okay, and it gave you another intraday entry at 35 bucks, okay. So this is a wide range bar clearing resistance. Now, here's another example, all right? Here's another example of a wide range bar clearing resistance, right? So take a look. Here's a stock that struggled in this $9.75 area. So over here, you can see the stock was a little bit extended. It put in a topping tail, and then it pulled all the way back to $7, okay? And then it bounced, and what happened? When it retested, retested the prior pivot, it struggled. Why? Because sellers came in here before. So we should expect to see sellers again. They were relevant and prevalent before. They're going to be relevant and prevalent again. And it also entered that $9.75 area after a three or four bar move. So what happened? Capitulation. The stock needed to rest. It's like, hey, I just ran a marathon last night. Well, I need you to do one again tomorrow you're probably not going to run the second marathon as well as you ran the first marathon. So you're going to need to rest. Well, this is what the stock did. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 days it rested. Took its time, catching its breath. And then boom, a wide range bar comes in and takes out all of the sellers again. This bar creates a new move higher. All right. And this one is really nice because it happened after a 12 day resting period. Okay, so when you look at that, it's perfectly done. It's perfectly executed. Sellers came in, 12 day resting period. This little shakeout was also nice to see right here. Comes back up, wide range bar takes out that area. The stock's off to the races. It gives you a swing trading breakout entry right here. And then it also gives you a swing trading three bar play entry two days later. And what's beautiful about this? Well, if you wanna swing trade it, that's awesome. Buy it above this line, the, the red line right there. If you want to intraday trade it, guess what? You can do that too. You're going to take this stock once it breaks the red line during this day, and you're going to drill down to a two-minute, one-minute, five-minute chart, and you're going to look for an intraday entry. I blew it up over here so you can get a better understanding of what this looks like over here. I guess this should be moved to probably there, but you get the point. All right. So this is that wide range bar taking out this tug of war, this battle. This is your swing trade entry right there. This is another swing trade entry right here. And if you want to intraday trade it, great. Wait till it breaks above 975 and look for an entry. Boom. Wide range bar breaking above resistance. Now, relative strength. This is one of my favorite things in all of trading. It might be my most favorite thing. Okay. My favoriteest, mostest, favoriteest thing. Okay. Casinos have about a 1% edge especially in blackjack if you know how to play. But if you can count cards, you can get that edge to virtually nothing. In trading, we learn technical charts based off support and resistance and volume and, and those things to gain an edge. And the edge does not have to be huge to make money in this business. Guys, depending on your trade management, you could have a 30, 40% batting average and make a boatload of money. In fact, I'm back testing six different managements right now. Do you know what the most profitable management batting average is so far for the year? For the year, it's 48%. Yes, it's beating the management strategy that's batting 68%. It's 20 percentage points lower 
and it's making double the money. How's that possible? Ask me later. It's for a different time. But my point is, you don't have to have a super high batting average to make a ton of money in this business. Win-loss ratio combined with your batting average is what's most important. But that's, again, a topic for a different day. Now let's talk about relative strength. All right, relative strength. Take a look at the stock here. Okay, Five-minute stock on the left, five-minute market on the right. The market gapped up and pulled back. It's two to one, Chris, uh, in the management I was specifically referring to just now. The market gapped up, okay, and pulled back. Now note, the first two five-minute bars of the day were red. The first two five-minute bars of the day on the stock, one was green and one was a bottoming tail. So I immediately know this stock is stronger than the market. The first five-minute bar on the stock is green. The first five-minute bar on the market is red. The second five-minute bar on the market is red. The second five-minute bar on the stock is a bottoming tail. Guys, what are we expecting the market to do when it pulls into this, this support area right here? I'm expecting a bounce in the market. 337, 338, where this area right there, we, if we pull into this area, buyer stepped up here, bounce. Buyer stepped up here, bounce. Buyer stepped up here, bounce. I'm expecting a bounce in this area, 338-ish, give or take, 337.50, 338, et cetera, and so forth. I'm expecting a bounce. Well, if my stock is already stronger than the market, and it's giving me a three-bar play pattern, and I'm expecting the market to bounce, what do you think is going to happen when the market bounces? Think about what I'm saying for a second. The stock is already stronger than the market. The stock has already given me a pattern, and I'm expecting a bounce in the market. Well, my stock should rip. It should lead the market higher, and sure enough, it did. And in this case, it went about a dollar twenty. No, not about a dollar forty on what ended up being about a forty cent stop loss. Right? I mean, this thing goes dollar twenty three plus about fifteen cents, about a dollar forty, give or take. This stock went three and a half to one in about thirty minutes. Made thirteen hundred bucks on it, moved on. That is relative strength against the market. All right. That is relative strength. I am expecting a bounce because the last four times, three times the market tested, it bounced. So I'm expecting the fourth or fifth time to bounce. My stock is already showing it's stronger than the market. Now I just need the market to go. And it did. And we were right. Hey, once in a while you'll be wrong and the market keeps going lower. That's why we have stop losses. Okay? Here's another example. You guys remember this from yesterday? You guys remember this from yesterday? This happened yesterday on Walmart. The market gapped down and we had a bearish bias. Walmart was on my short list yesterday. I did not buy Walmart yesterday, just to be clear. I did not buy Walmart. But this, this is an extreme example of relative strength. The market gapped down and rolled. I mean, it just got crushed. Walmart gapped down and just ripped, just absolutely ripped. It went up like $6. It was one of the biggest days Walmart's had in months. Seriously, look at the trading range of Walmart yesterday. It was one of the biggest days Walmart has had in many months. And it did it while the market was getting crushed. Okay? I had Walmart on my short list also. So this was an example of extreme relative strength, but it was an example that I couldn't take advantage of. Okay? So I'm showing it to you just to see this is what it looks like. People always ask me, well, well what do you mean relative to what, Jared? I mean relative to the market. In this case, relative to the SPY. Because Walmart's a New York stock, so the S&P 500 is the best correlation that I can look at. So Walmart ripped, market tanked. I did not find an entry on it, but some people in the chat room did. Some people got in. But this is a great example of relative strength. Okay? I grabbed that red bar with the bottom until it was beautiful. Oh, right there. In there, I'm guessing. Yeah, it worked out very well. Okay? All right. <laughs> Shaq went to Walmart. That's funny. That's funny. Higher time frame power trend. What we're looking for, okay, a strong trend in a higher time frame. Despite intraday trading, daily charts and uptrends are very important and can have powerful moves that translate to big intraday money. You just need to find that intraday entry. So what I'm looking at here is a daily chart of a stock. What I'm seeing is a double bottom retest down here. Take a look at the bottom 
right? Red bar, bounce, retest, bounces. So once this stock gets back above 42 or 43, right? In fact, if I can, let me do this real quick, just because I think visually it's easier for you guys. All right, just bear with me. Once the stock gets above that area, okay, you're off to the races, man. Okay, so this stock is trending higher, moves up, pulls back, moves up, pulls back. Now, is this area super duper clean on the right? No, right? No, but the stock is clearly strong. It's double bottomed. It's above resistance, higher highs, now some higher lows, rising. Um, in this case, I think that's a 50 moving average, 200 moving average. So this is a higher time frame power trend. So I want to find a way on this right in this area here, right? I want to find a way to get on this trend. Okay, and you do that by drilling down. So once you find a strong or weak daily chart that has a beautiful, smooth trend, your job is to drill down and find an entry. And don't worry, we're gonna take a look at all that too. All right, here's a picture of power on a 15 minute chart. Why do I put a 15 minute chart up? Because if you're trading on a one minute chart, you could use this picture of power as your bias time frame. Now, I would only recommend this for experienced professional traders. No, you're not that. If you have to ask yourself if you're that, you're not that. Okay, I'm not trying to be rude about it, it's simple. If you're a newer trader your first couple years, don't be trading one minute charts using the 15 minute as your bias. I'm showing this for more experienced traders that if you're trading one minute charts, maybe even two minute charts, you can use the 15 minute chart as your picture of power, as your bias time frame. This is a uptrending 15 minute chart, okay? And you could buy it on the 15 minute or you can drill down, okay? And Aaron, you're doing great. You are crushing it. And this, you know what? I'm glad you made that point, Aaron. Aaron says, I don't trade the one minute. I'm still too new. Guys, Aaron is a phenomenal trader. I mean, Aaron, you are crushing it. I mean, you. I think you just said you're gonna be making more in trading than you are in your day job. Was that you yesterday or two days ago who said that? I think that was you. My point is, is this is a person who's doing very well not using one minute charts. Think about that. This person's doing very well, not using. You know who doesn't also use one? Cliff, for those of you in the chat room, Cliff rarely, rarely uses one minute charts, okay? So my point though is all time frames are valid, but you have to find which one speaks to you the most. I discourage you from using one minute charts when you're new because they move so quickly. It's harder to get some uh, confirmation on a one minute chart than it is say a three or a five or a 15 minute chart. Okay, um, so that's the whole idea, EJ. The comment is, oh my, this is a lot for someone who's just started. But that's awesome, E, because what's gonna happen eventually, E, a few more months down the road, six months, nine months, you're gonna be looking at this right now when people first start trading. What happens is they're like Neo in the Matrix, but before Neo begins to believe. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? So Neo in the Matrix looks at the Matrix, it's just a bunch of numbers. Right? Everything is just fast and, and furious. He has no idea what's going on. And then all of a sudden, when he starts to believe, he can see the bullet come before the bullet gets to him, right? And he just dodges it. That's what will happen to you eventually. When, you, when you've read enough charts and you've seen enough charts, it just, it's unconscious competence. It's like walking. You don't think about placing your left foot in front of your right foot. You just do it. But when you were a year or two years old, you thought about it, right? You did. You thought about it at a year old, 12 months but now you don't think about walking. Trading will become the same thing. This is why I'm trying to impart good habits in you guys. I want you to learn proper so you don't have to fix bad mistakes later because mistakes, they're hard to fix, especially mental mistakes, okay? So, gapping stocks, gapping stocks. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure there is enough void to get your two to one or three to one reward to risk. Look to the left for any junk. This particular stock is gapping over a red bar and just about over a pivot. There's not a lot of room here. There's only about a dollar, dollar fifty here. But for this stock, that's enough. You're gonna get yourself a 30 cent stop loss and you're gonna trade this up to $30. Now, what I haven't shown yet on purpose are the actual intraday entries. We're gonna get there, I promise. Right now, we're literally talking about biases, biases, if that's correct, okay? Don't worry, in the next five minutes, we're gonna get down to the intraday entries. So, now we have what? Novice Gap. 
This is a gapping stock, but it's a novice gap, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six bars up, massive gap. This is a shortable stock. This is an extended gap right out of professional trading strategies, okay? Sellers are likely coming in here. Why? Because you know darn well if you bought the stock at 40 and it gapped to 48, you'd be selling some, especially if you were trading it. The stock was already up six days in a row and then had a massive gap on top of it. There's going to be profit taking, right? There's going to be profit taking, okay? So right here is the five minute entry, 47, 47. There's a beautiful breakdown, drop, nice play. 50 cent stop loss and the stock went like a dollar 25. So two and a half to one, perfect. Perfect. Okay. You guys remember this play? A little old fella. Jeff Yates called it. Jeff also took a great trade today on Cisco today. All right. Jeff takes textbook trades, period. It's just the way he trades. He's like, look, if I'm going to go down swinging, I'm going down with textbook play. Okay. So this was a, a trade Jeff called yesterday. So note, we looked at a trade that Cliff called yesterday on HD. There's Cliff commenting now. Okay. Now we're looking at a trade that Jeff called yesterday. It's a team effort around here. It really is a team effort, okay? 5064 was the entry and 5084 was the stop loss. This is a short trade, meaning we are looking to make money with the stock going lower. I'm looking, I'm wanting the stock to go lower. So the entry was 5064 and the stop was 5084. But let's not look at the two minute. Let's start with the 60. This is our time frame of bias. Okay, so we already determined yesterday that our market bias was weak. We talked about it on the HD trade. Our market bias was weak. Great. Now let's look for short ideas. Okay, so we look for short ideas. Okay, and in this case, Jeff found a 60 minute pattern or gap, if you will, on Citigroup. It gapped under support, which is the pink line, and it had room down to 49.50. This is the void area. Take a look at it from 50.75 to 49.50. All right, so it had about a dollar 25. Now you think, well, that's not a lot. It's a lot of space for Citigroup. As you can see, this stock does big volume, 25 million at the time I took this picture, and it's a 20 cent stop loss. So there's a beautiful two minute breakdown right there. See it? It started out as a two minute three bar play. Notice that? Take a look at that. It started out as a two minute three bar play. Okay? Then, Right here, it continued sideways, 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 and it finally broke. So it went from a two-minute three-bar play to a two-minute breakdown. Entry was 50.64, stop was 50.84, boom, there it is. So do the math on that. This thing, went, let's just call it a dollar. It went five to one on your money, five to one. And it all happened, okay, because the daily bias was lower, the 60-minute gap was lower, and we also got a pattern, the trifecta. The bias was great, the market direction was great, and the lower time frame entry was great. Stop making trading harder than it needs to be. This is perfection. Cliff showed perfection on HD yesterday, we just saw that. Jeff showed perfection on Citigroup yesterday. This is it. If you can't find something this good, don't take it. You know what's a great example of that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Microsoft. Microsoft did not meet this three criteria today. And I took it and I lost money on it. That was, that was not my best effort. I can do better than that. That wasn't a great trade today on Microsoft. I'd like to have that one back. This is a trade that if it doesn't work, you can sleep well at night. I'm not kidding. If this trade doesn't work, you sit there and go, I did my job today. I did my job. I took a wide open shot and it rimmed out. Oh, well, but I'm going to take the next shot that I'm wide open. I promise you. That's trading in a nutshell. Trading in a nutshell says I will line up all the ducks in a row. I will put the odds to the best of my ability in my favor. And if somebody's better than me that day, then Tip your cap and say, too good. That's it. Tip your cap and just say, hey, man, too good. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not going to win 100% of the time. And you don't need to. I bet you if you were to ask Jeff and Cliff, I bet you they tell you their batting average is somewhere between 50 and 60%. Well, shit. That means they lose between 40 and 50% of the time.
Think about what I just said. They lose between 40 and 50% of the time. And they make tons of money doing this. Unmol's up 200 grand this year already. And we're, what, seven weeks into the year. You do not have to win all the time. You just have to win bigger when you win than when you lose. And you do that by putting the trifecta together like this. And another thing you need to know, you don't need to be Elmer Fudd. You don't need to come in and take 10, 20 trades a day. The best traders I know take one to three trades a day. The very best traders take one to three, sometimes as many as four. Cast takes about four trades a day. Unmall takes about three or four trades a day. Cliff and Jeff take one to two trades a day. I take about two trades a day. That's it. A trade a day keeps the J-O-B away. That's it. If you take good trades, if you take crap, then yeah, you're going to dig yourself a hole. Okay. He does fish and Fred with options, but his stock trading is not 90%, right? Stock trading is not 90%. Okay. So now I showed you kind of alluded to what we're about to get to entry timeframes for pictures for pictures of power. So basically we just looked at the four pictures of power, right? Wide range igniting bars, relative strength, relative weakness, gapping stocks and daily trends in, in any specific order. Okay. So now what do we have? Well, we have a combination trade right here. What do you mean? What I mean by this is sometimes the entry and the bias can be the same. In this case, a daily chart. Guys, this, this gap up right here, you could have bought that gap at the open and said, hey, Jared, it's a swing trade and my stop loss is down here. And I say, okay, that's acceptable. This is your entry on the swing trade and your stops down here. Or you could have used this gap up to drill down to a two minute, five minute chart to find an entry. Okay. Over here, you have a gap up plus a wide range bar taking out most of the resistance, not quite all, but most 95% of the resistance. That's igniting a new move. So this is a trade on that wide range bar. I could take an intraday trade on this. Why? Because it has room from like 151 all the way up to like 165. That bar right there, right there. Intraday trade. Why? It's a nice gap couple days later, this bar right here. Oh, by the way, last call for PTS bidding. It's five minutes late. Last call for PTS bidding. You want to get your PTS bid in? Get it in now. I'll give you an extra one or two minutes. Okay. I totally slipped my mind. I apologize. Last call for PTS bidding. All right. That's it. I'll, I, I'll get the timestamps in my email. So I'll know. All right. I'll give you two more minutes to uh, 1208. All right. 1208. Anyway, wide range bar. This is a swing entry and an intraday entry. Intraday swing trade. They're the best types of trades you can take, right? Intraday swings. Get in on the intraday and have it trigger the daily swing while you're in it on the intraday. I'll repeat. Get in it on an intraday trade and have it trigger the daily swing trade at the same time. Oof, it's a glorious thing, okay? Now what do we have? We have the market and the stock. Well, take a look at the market here. It's going lower. It's going lower. This stock is going higher. It's trending higher. Note, we have a wide range green bar here. This green bar is telling us, wow, buyers are clearly in control. It put in that green bar while the market put in a wide range red bar. Think about what I said here. Okay. So this put in a green bar while the market put in a red bar. Now going directly against the market. Okay. Is not an easy thing to do. So in this case, you're hoping the stock will kind of consolidate back towards the moving average. And guess what it does? It consolidates back towards the moving average. And then what happens? Right around the same time, 950-ish, 953, guess what happens? The market starts to go green. Well, now that the market goes green, I am not, I wanna be very clear, I'm not expecting the market to test the high of the day here. The market is weak today, but when it bounces, I do expect it to bounce back, right? Back to the moving average, maybe a little bit above the moving average, back into this resistance area. So when the market starts to go green, this stock takes off. That's exactly what I want to see, right? 950 is down here at the bottom right there. So by 952, we're going green. What's the stock do? Rip one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars in a row up. What's the market do? It goes a bit higher. That's all you needed. That's all you needed. So this stock is on your radar because of the extreme relative strength. But now your job is to find match the relative strength with a little bit of market timing. 
And that's what we got here, right? We got a little bit of market timing at 952 or 953. Now, if the market was continuing to drop and this stock was breaking out at 2380, that would have been a very tough entry, right? If the market had continued lower and this stock breaks, that's a tough entry. But in this case, you got a little bit of green in the market and then green in the stock. 50 period and 200 period, okay? 50 and 200, all right? So now, what do we have here? We have a daily chart with a gap up. Well, this big wide range red bar, your goal, your job is to, in your mind, of course, you don't need to do it in your mind because it should be on your screen. But see this wide range red bar? Well, that created void, didn't it? That has to be five, six, seven, ten bars down on a 15 minute chart. It's got to be four or five bars down on a 60. That pullback created void on the way back up. So this stock gaps up. And I know it has some room. This first bar is really big. That's a little bit concerning, $2 first bar, but it does give you a reasonable pullback. The concern here would be average trading range, right? I like the entry because of the strong daily, but the average trading range would be my biggest issue here. So if I were to take this trade, I would probably just scalp it back to the high of the day, right? You're gonna get in somewhere around 45, 60, stop loss probably like 45, 40, 20 cent stop loss, and I would try to trade it back to like 4620. All right, I probably would not hold this all day. Again, if you're managing on pivots, that's fine, but I would probably scalp it back to the high day. Why? Because the average trading range was tough. But you can see you match the higher time frame with the lower time frame. All right. What about this? Higher time frame bias with lower time frame entry. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars in a row up. All right, eight bars in a row up, okay? Think about that. What is to the left after the eight bars in a row up, guys? Talk to me, a little audience participation. When you look to the left, like Beyonce, to the left, to the left, right? You're eight or nine bars up, and when you look to the left, what do you see on that ninth bar up? A whole lot of resistance, a whole bunch of junk. Well, extended into resistance equals a pullback. Extended into support equals a bounce. This is right out of professional trading strategies and the bid is closed on that, by the way, the bid is closed. All right, so you are eight or nine bars in a row into a double, triple top resistance area and, oh, it gets better. You get a doji bar at the top. What does the doji bar represent? Sellers are creeping in. How do I know? Because it was green, 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 all the way up, wide range ending bar on volume. On ending volume, wide range ending bar into resistance. And then I get a doji bar? Oh baby, we're getting a pullback. And here's the beauty. You don't need a huge pullback. It's a 60 minute chart. So what am I doing? I'm looking to short this. Some of you are going, are you crazy, Jared? No. I am letting the higher time frame be my guide. I'm letting the whale, I'm letting the shark carve out the path for me. I'm letting the institutions tell me where to put my money. You guys are running in front of the, you're running in front of the shark right here if you're going long on this trade. You're literally saying, I'm gonna sacrifice myself. This isn't a New York minute in the 1980s. I'm not looking to sacrifice myself. I wanna be around. You're gonna short this bad boy. And that doji bar gives you every reason to wanna to short it. Sellers are creeping. Doesn't look like much, does it? Until you look here and the stock goes from 122 to 115, $7 on a basically a 60 or 70 cent stop loss. Truthfully, the stop loss should be a little higher. Personally, I would put it at the high of the day. Instead of 122.15, I'd probably put it at 122.60, okay? Like a dollar, I'd probably put it there. Okay, so when you look at this, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Oh, what a beautiful thing. Jared, when the ATR is reached in the first 30 to 40 minutes of the open, but you see more volume, well, a lot of that, Karen, depends on the gap as well. If it's just a normal day, I'd probably stay away from it. But if it has a really nice gap, some type of shock value, something like that, then I'd probably possibly look to trade it. 
All right. There has to be some special reason to trade it. Okay. All right. A few more slides. Wow. This is taking longer than I wanted. We got to get through this. Matching time frames. What do we have? 60 minute breakdown right here. 60 minute breakdown. Three minute, four bar play. Okay. Right there. 60 minute breakdown. Three minute, four bar play. Okay. Right there. You have to match the time frame. You just look, it's just not smart not to. Like, you don't want to catch yourself in the middle of a trade going, shoot, I forgot to look at the daily or the 60. It's not conducive to success. All right? I want to know all the information before I invest. Does that make sense? Don't give me half the presentation. Give me the whole presentation, and then I'll let you know if I want to invest. That's the same thing with your stocks. Give me the whole picture before I let you know if I want to take that trade on a five-minute or a two-minute. Okay? So, over here. Remember earlier I showed you the gap on this earlier? I showed you the gap on this. It's gapping up over this area. Look, what's going to happen? See that little bottoming tail right there? That little bottoming tail. Boom, boom, pulls back, rips. Okay? That's your buy setup. Entry right here on the five minute. Right? There's your entry on the five minute because the daily is breaking above this resistance area. Moves higher, pulls back, moves higher. This stock is going, I don't know, a dollar higher on something like a 20 cent stop loss. This was a beautiful play into support at the moving average with the daily in alignment. I'm going through this slightly quicker, guys, because Jeff Yates is coming on here soon in about five minutes, and I have four more slides to go through, all right? So here's another example of what you just saw, okay? Okay, let's go back real quick, real quick, real quick. Take a look at the daily. See the daily? See the daily? See the daily? Take a look. Take a look. That's the gap. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's go back. All right. This is the five minute chart you just saw. This is the five minute chart you just saw. It's beautiful bicep. This is what that five minute chart looks like on a 15 minute chart. This is what the 15 minute bicep up over here at like noon looks like on a two minute. It's a double bottom retest in an uptrend. Do you see how using multiple time frames also gives you different pictures? And those different pictures allow you to either get in the stock sooner or wait for more confirmation. This is gold. I, I, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, why am I teaching this right now? I'm not kidding with you. These either give, wait for more confirmation because what you're seeing on higher or lower time frames, or it allows you to get in a little bit sooner. And this is the same exact stock, just on three different time frames. You have a five minute buy setup. That's what it looks like on the 15 minute. Power trend on the 15 minute, wonderful. That helps me, confirms my entry on the five. Over here, it's like, well, shoot, I missed that five minute buy setup. Darn it, I should have been in that. Okay, let's be patient. Let's wait for another entry. Well, now you get a 15 minute pullback right there with a bottoming tail, and that bottoming tail is the retest on the two minute. So that retest on the two minute does what? Does what? Confirms my entry on the 15 minute buy setup. So the bottoming tail, while it's very nice, and I'm thinking about buying this stock on the buy setup at $30, the double bottom retest is my confirmation to say, you know what, this is a really good buy setup, right? It's a really good buy setup. So this is how you trade properly and professionally, okay? Now, I always have to do this as well. I just have to. Here's a slide of what you're not supposed to do. Okay. I try not to lead with negative negativity. I like to stay positive when it comes to trading stuff, but every once in a while, we just got to go there. This is a stock on a daily chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know. It's like 25 bars up, 25 bars up, 25 bars up. I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot of bars up. What's to the left? Big old resistance, resistance, sellers, resistance, sellers. Both times this stock hit $220. It got spanked right it got beat on one time really got beat on badly so you get the double bottom that's cool but we're not at the double bottom we're at the top okay you see it right there and somebody's gonna say jared 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 look at this five minute three bar play i'm gonna take it at 220 and i'm gonna think god bless you good luck to you this is not a good trade and here's the problem if you vacuum traded this it would look like a decent, mediocre to decent three bar play. But if you looked at the daily, you're thinking, I should actually be shorting this stock. 
That's what you should be thinking. I am up 20 some bars in a row to double top resistance. This stock is going to pull back. You should be shorting it. And here's the crazy thing. The professionals are shorting it and you don't understand why. They're sitting there going, oh, don't go long on that. And you're going to go long anyway because you're a vacuum trader and you don't look at the higher time frame. And you get in and wait, 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 wait. Oh, my goodness. Now, thankfully, thankfully, this stock never triggered the entry. Thankfully, it never triggered the entry. But it did fail. It never triggered the entry, but it did fail. Okay? You look at that. Yeah, which makes begs you, Chris, why'd you do what you did this morning on Pan W? Okay, it worked. But that's not a good long-term approach, right? So you got to ask, of the 10R you made today, why? Was it a good 10R? Was it made properly? Or maybe I shouldn't be that aggressive. Sure, of course it's going to work sometimes. Guys, sometimes great trades fail and sometimes terrible trades work and everything in between, right? We're just looking for the odds over an extended period of time, right? But don't do this. For goodness sake, don't do this, all right? So, summary. The higher time frame is always king, period. That is it, okay? Should we call it primary? Because we're not allowed to say master bedroom anymore. We can't say king or queen, so the higher time frame is always primary. I'm just messing with you. I just couldn't help myself. Okay, the higher time frame is king. Get used to looking at multiple time frames. If you start now at looking at multiple time frames, in a month, you won't even question it. Your, your eyes will just go to all, of, all the time frames. That's it. You won't even think about it. It'll become unconscious competence. You'll just look, look, look. Okay, I looked at all the time frames. If we did our job properly with the picture of power, the four pictures of power, then we should be in a good position to take advantage of a significant move right? We should be in a good position to take advantage of a significant move. That doesn't mean everyone's going to work though, but more often than not, they will. These are powerful concepts and when applied correctly should correlate to a high level of accuracy. Therefore, it's okay to be a more aggressive with a good lower time frame entry as long as, and I'm adding, as long as your bias time frame is correct and your market bias is correct. Get in early with a good pattern and look to add for maximum gains. Now remember, I said it earlier, I'll repeat it. Please, if you're new, please don't be trading off the one minute chart in the first five or 10 minutes of the day. Please don't do that. Stick to the two minute, five minute, 15. I think the five minutes, a great time frame. Another piece of advice, probably don't trade the first five or 10 minutes until you have at least a couple of years of experience. And even then, even then, you know what my worst pattern is this year so far? My worst pattern this year, I told you guys yesterday, one minute, three bar plays before 9.35. One minute, three bar plays before 9.35. It's, by, it's the only pattern I'm actually losing money on this year. Every other pattern I've taken, I'm making money on, except for one minute, three bar plays before 9.35 so far this year. Two minute, five minute, three bar, crushing it, killing it. One minute, three bar plays before 9.35. I have 18 years of experience and they're still shaking me. So I'm cutting back on those. I'm sticking to two, three, and five minute three bar plays. I learn quick. I'm a quick learner when it comes to that. All right? So just remember, those four pictures of power are very, very important. I will put them back up one more time for you guys. These are the four pictures of power. Wide range bar clearing significant support or resistance extreme relative strength or weakness, a strong trend on a higher time frame, and gapping stocks. You will begin with that, then you will drill down. You will never drill down until you've done this first. Does that make sense? You'll never go to a two minute chart until you've looked at the higher time frame first. This is why when we make our morning watch list, it's such an important list because that list has been vetted, right? I already have gone through those stocks, so I know the 60 and I know the daily looks good. So now I can just focus on the 2, the 5, and the 15 because I already looked at the higher time frames. Okay? Guys, these lessons are meant to help make you guys better traders. They're meant to take you to the next step, the next level in your trading. You guys want to make 200 grand in seven weeks? Well, Unmall didn't do that his first year in trading. The guy's got 10, 11, I don't know, 12 years experience. What he's ever he's up to these days, he's up to a lot. He's 30 years old. 
He's 30 years old. And in seven weeks, he has made more money than most people will make this year. Okay? I just want to give you an example. And, I, and I'm, I'm saying this to you so that you'll understand how good he is. Do you guys know, and most of you don't know this, do you know if you're 27 years old in America, I'm used, speaking of America, if you're 27 years old in America and you make $170,000 a year, you're in the top 1% of all money earners for your age bracket, your age category? $170,000 a year at 27 years old is top 1%. What's 200 grand in seven weeks? What's seven figures a year at 27 or 30? One one hundredth of one percent, right? My point is that is possible for all traders, for all people, if they want to put the time in. But he didn't do this in three months. Neither did I. It took me a good two or three years before I got good at this. And even then, it was good at a low level, right? Ask Cliff Clark. Cliff Clark is a robot. He's a machine. It took him a good three years, maybe four Jeff Yates, same thing. Why am I telling you this? Because I just went through a very powerful lecture and I do not expect you to assimilate everything that I just said the first time around. You're a human being. You're not a plug-in USB drive. I'm saying this to you to encourage you, not discourage, to encourage you. Say, look, I've been doing this a year, Jared. I'm not getting it yet. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to be better than you were yesterday and last month but you're not supposed to be a professional. You're not gonna get in the NBA from zero to one year. You're not gonna beat Tiger Woods in golf if you just picked up a golf club a year ago. It's not gonna happen for you. Give it some time. It's okay to struggle your first few months, your first year. It's normal. Feel okay about the struggle. It's in the struggle that you learn the most. So don't be discouraged because the only time that you fail is when you quit. And I know everyone right now is like, I'm not going to fail. I'm... Many of you sadly will quit. But if you don't, just think of it like this. The future is bright. You don't have to sit in rush hour traffic. You don't have to listen to your boss tell you to come in Saturdays and do TPS reports. Okay? Even if you're just looking for a part-time gig or look at Ollie, he's retired. He does this for fun. Everyone in the spectrum from 18 to 88, you can do this. You just have to put the time in. That's it. You just have to put the time in. But most people, you just don't want to put the time in. Let's be honest about it. You give yourself a, the tightest timeline possible. You go, well, it didn't work in three days, so I'm going to quit. I gave it three months. It didn't work. I gave it 12 months. It didn't work. You don't even get a college degree until you get four years. And a college degree is damn near worthless. Let's be honest. What do you really learn in college? Right? Other how to be woke. What do you really learn in college? Nothing. And that was four years of your life and 200 grand. Give this four years and 200 grand and you will make more money than you've ever dreamed of. So I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture. I hope you found it helpful. Okay. I do these every single Wednesday. Quality level, pretty close to today's. All right. So I hope you guys learned a bit. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.